So anyway, I'm going to talk about spark plugs. Um, well, this is a basic 101. I'm not trying to teach anybody how to do anything. I'm just a uh, beginner myself. Uh, if you take my advice, uh, it wasn't my idea. I'm not telling you to do that. But it's not that complicated either. You know, the spark plugs offer you some clues as to what, what is going on in the motor. They're right there at the face first, right in the heart of the whole thing. You know, they're at the explosion, which is the center of the whole deal. The spark plug can give you clues as to what might be going on with your motor. You know, even if it, nothing, you know, quote unquote, nothing is happening, well, that just means everything's fine. You know, good. Everything looks normal. Everything's the right color, right temperature. Okay, and everything's then it's good. Then what you're figuring out is that you're okay right now. You know, check it again in three months, six months, or whatever mileage. You know, that kind of thing. Just basic maintenance. And that's kind of what I'm going to do here. Um, and also, uh, just because it's the basic stuff, I'm not just going to take it out, put it back in. I'm going to I use a couple tools to show you have options, you know, and things that I have available. And um, But aside from that, it's basically check it out, make any adjustment or, or change it out or um, if it needs it or whatever, and then put it back in. So I want to kind of That's it. start a video series on the basic maintenance of my bike specifically. Because my bike, even though it's from 92, uh, 3, um, it came with the owner's manual, which had listed in there some of the basic things that they expected you to be able to do on your own. It, had, it came with a basic toolkit, which my bike already lost, unfortunately. I have tools, so I can do all the work. But luckily, the book has, you know, some of the things, the basic steps to do basic jobs. One of them is replace your spark plugs. or even four plugs or, or whatever, three, four plugs more. But they're all over the place. They're inside, it's underneath the fairing. It, it's under the seat, it's under the tank, it's under both. Who knows where the fuck it, I, the, some of these bikes that have so much crap on them that you don't even know where the motor is. So you can't see that. Everything's covered up, you know. My bike is a little more old school and uh, basic. And it just, everything's right there. Plus the way it's designed actually, the spark plug's even more convenient. So, um, uh, luckily on mine, you know, the first two spark plugs are really easy to find. If you can find more, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> but, uh, we'll just do my first two here. And your spark plug wire. Coming out. And you just lay this aside. It's no big deal. Now, try to slide your uh, socket on there. There we go. And once you get it off, you can also do this uh, T-handle, which I have an extension on. This is just an extra small, short extension. This will give you some clearance above the cylinder itself. If it's too low, like a ratchet, let's say, you know, then your hand is still kind of hitting it. But the thing about a ratchet is that you're always, well, half, one of the turns is, uh, is doesn't do anything. You're just rewinding it so that you can crank it off again, and then you're rewinding and cranking it off again. So basically, you're kind of doing a half turn every time. But in the, if something is like this, where it's actually fairly loose, you, it's faster just to be able to go in the same direction all the time. Now you're doing it twice as fast, and so why not, you know? Now, even if the key handle isn't faster than a ratchet per se, I do like the control that you get from using these kind of tools if you have the room and clearance. Now, in this case, the spark plugs are right on top and very accessible, so it makes sense to use these. On another bike, it might not be. Another thing is uh, I'm about to show you how, to, how I use the... Uh, speed wrench to get off the thing but I'm not against ratchets I love ratchets I have plenty it's just these are other ways to do it to use the speeder wrench 
you can also use a t-handle i have another part of the video i'm doing that too but i just thought i'd put this together just to show you that with the speeder wrench is actually very easy this is amazingly fast tool and you could even have an, a, a ratcheting adapter if you wanted to do that but the whole point of this is that you're always going in one direction there it goes. Um, and there you can see it's kind of a brown coffee brownish so to me that looks healthy and you can see maybe that there's not a lot of um, the, the edges on the electrode, the very center of that electrode, to me look fairly sharp. Which is what you want. When it starts looking rounded, smooth, uh, maybe it's at an angle crooked one way or the other, the top or the center electrode. This is the ground, this one on the outside, and then the one inside the little dot in the middle. That's the positive spark jumps between them. So when one or one or the other looks misformed, malformed somehow, that means there's there could be a problem. Or it's just there's no real problem, it's just wearing out. It's old. But these this looks I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it looks fairly sharp and fairly new. They're not that new, but it looks just basically it's in healthy, it's good condition. So I'll just clean this up. And speaking of cleaning up, make sure that you clean up around the spark plug before you take it out. But you know, you don't want a lot of dirt around the edge here and then you knock it in. This looks fairly clean so there's nothing happen. But um, it can, you know, depending on what you do with your motorcycle, it could very easily be a big messy experience. So let me wash this up. And I'm letting it drip into the little tape paper towel. And then just wiping it down. I'm mean, just wiping it off. So this is this isn't gonna like polish it or anything. I'll leave it be. That's that's fine for now. You know this isn't gonna be brand new. I'm gonna buy a new one eventually anyway. I just figured since I'm in there, might as well give it a quick clean. Now according to the book, you can see here it's uh, the gap is 0.60. Here you can see where the uh, it actually is recommending spark plugs, which is interesting. But uh, you can see here the gap. That's why it's good to have more than one reference book. Because they give you slightly different information sometimes. It's kind of the same, but it's just explained a little different, or it's a slightly different variation. Maybe one book's to five or ten years newer, so it has you know more up-to-dated information, things like that. It's useful. Uh, and this is just like, uh, all these are individual gauges so you push it out here and then it shows you where you're at and you can see um oops <laughs> try not to set fire to your book it's important you can see perhaps the um the value here of uh 0 0.25 0 0.025.024 which is right on the money as far as what they said 24 to 2.8 so that's these two outside ones are the, actually the ones that are correct for this application. They're the biggest ones, and they're the ones that are closest. It could be one step higher, but these will be fine. These will work. So then you take your, your plug, and you slide it in. As it shows you. This is way too loose. This needs to be a lot lower. So then we get the other tool. So this is made to slide in depending on how big your spark plug is. And then you just bend it down. But I'm pushing I'm pushing this thing that way. I'm pushing it up like this. And I'm bending, I'm bending the thing down like this to to close this gap. Is what the whole point is. This, this looks a little more robust. And even though this seems like a flimsy little aluminum thing, it does actually work. 
Now conveniently there's a 64 right there, so I can just test it. Still seems loose to me. Spend a little bit more. Now you see how the wire is starting to hang up on the uh, on, uh, on the electrodes. It's not quite fitting through. That's what you want, except for you don't want it to stop. So we can test it with these, which are completely flat, because the wire is a little bit round, a little bit bent. It's not the greatest. This is a, a, a flat uh, a flat feeler gauge like this is better. Yeah, so it's almost there. I can just feel it beginning to drag. That's actually perfect. Yeah. It's actually perfect. So that's how you do that. Now, instead of doing the other one at the same time, we're just going to put each one in uh, back together. But it's uh, separate individual. I don't want to mix uh, anything up. Um, etc etc so to put it in I got this copper based anti-seize liquid molly for uh, re-screwing re together things on aluminum parts especially like this that's actually recommended for this job here where this nut spins off that's another video but then you put it in between those two parts again to keep it from seizing I, and, and regarding the spark plugs, I feel the same way. Why not keep keep these from from gluing together, gluing themselves together? Let it uh, push itself on as I thread it. Okay. So I'm just going to lay it in there as careful as I can. And then I get it started by hand, so I know that I'm not cross-threading anything. Luckily, it's just uh, easy enough access to do this by hand. It can be a little tricky to get it to go, but this is why you don't want to use tools. You want to make sure that I can do it by hand. Then I know it's correctly done. See, there it went. So I was at the slightly wrong angle. It sort of felt like it wanted to start, but it wouldn't. Now with tools, it would be so much easier to just get it started partly. I feel resistance and then just start cranking it down with a ratchet or whatever. And then you could be messing it up by adjusting my angle carefully. Now suddenly I was able to, there comes a point where it's not going to work by hand anymore, but once you get to that point, once you know it's half on at least, now it's a different story. Now you know it's uh, where it belongs, thread wise. And then you can just do it by hand. And I just do, do, do it just very lightly snug. I don't make it super hard because we're gonna crank it down with a torque wrench. So so that, that's where I want it to be properly done with the torque wrench, not me trying to do it by hand hard as I can. And then when a torque happens, click, of course it clicks because the thing's already on way too tight. Um, the, the thing about a torque wrench is it doesn't tell you if it's on too tight. Uh, digital torque wrench would tell you if it's on too tight. It only tells you if it's on the right way, with the right amount of tightness. So the torque wrench, is um, it's actually a little bit too big for the job, but it does it does have the reading. You ouch, unclip it and adjust the wheel until we get to um, 15 ish. 16. At, at this third, it's supposed to be 30 uh, newton pounds, which is like 20. It's like 16 or 20. 
Uh, but since I put the molly in there, I, I give it a little less, the uh, lubricant that is, the anti-seize lubricant. So then this goes on this. The uh, flex head is actually very convenient. And then we just bring it down until we hear a ping. There you go. Actually, I can just pull the whole thing out. And then put this back on. It should be a nice solid click or some other indicator that means it's really grabbed on. Don't just set it on there and think you're done. Make sure it's clamped on good. So just for fun, we're gonna try using this one next time. Oops. Put it aside. We wanna break that loose. We can use this uh, fancy one that I had from before, but the car, it was for the car. Like I said, this would reach down inside the motor and as you can see, it's, it stays together, which is great. So then it was easier to pull it off and it would pull the socket uh, with it instead of letting go. And then I had to reach in with my fingers trying to get the thing to let go of the actual plug. Yep, there it goes. And I can unplug this and then just twist it off. And like I said, you want to make sure it's clear of dirt. <coughs> Do the best you can with the tools you got. Now let's see what we got here. Oh, it's a light brown gray. I hope you can see that. But it's not black, oily, shiny, and it's not white. So white means overheated, black, oily, shiny means fouled. This one's correct. You see, remember how the last one was was kind of off? This one feels like it's already dragging correctly. Yeah. It's basically right there. Right where you want it. Part of the uh, spark plug is inside the engine cylinder itself and you can tell what part because these threads that are the dirtiest at the front those are actually inside the, the combustion chamber these are the ones that are inside the cylinder and they screw up these these actually extend inside now and all this is exposed so i'm going to put it mostly on this cleaner area because that's where it's actually going to grip. And of course, like I said, be mindful of the uh, torque wrench, torque settings. Because, you know, this is a big part. And screwing up something as simple as over tightening it with the threads, that's just kind of a dumb mistake. You know, you're making a huge problem simply because you just cranked it down too hard. You can take the spark plug out of the socket or you can just decide, you know, that's small and gentle enough uh, without a tool because you're still doing it by hand. And then you just carefully get the thread started uh, because it's being held there. See how I do it by hand? And it should be like this gentle. If it's hard, 
if you're fighting with it, it's a big struggle, either you're doing it wrong. Is the threading is something is not correct, the threading is off, cross threading it, something's not right. Now that it's been started and correctly, I know, now I can do the speeder bar. You just drill it all the way down. It's going to do it uh, hand tight. So I hope that was helpful. And you got something out of it. Remember, this is for a 1993 BMW R100R. All right. Like I said, if I if these work out with me trying to just do the basic maintenance in the uh, owner's manual, that was my idea for kind of a series here. If that sounds good to you give a thumbs up and give me a comment so that see if we can help some other people too all right thanks for watching again hope that helped and i'll see you in the next one bye Shadow. I was like, who's that? <laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. I almost had an accident with myself.